Hello, my name is Delilah Cordova, visibility creator here at Omnipresence Studios. We expose the world to our interviewees' unique products, services, and books, and we also help in their journey to go from undiscoverable to visible in a digital world. I am currently on a mission to conduct 100 author interviews, and we're talking about all things books, from publishing to new authors, and don't forget, marketing. I would like to welcome you to our show, Marketing and Coffee, where authors come to get inspired and experience. Hey authors, you finished your manuscript, what do you do next? If you would like to learn more about being featured on my show, go to marketingandcoffee.com and without further ado meet our next awesome author that's why i don't look at t- uh, students as like the bet like they get straight a's they're gonna be okay they're gonna be great i look at that type of moment like when they're tired when they everything's about to like crumble down and do they give up or do they have that attitude to go drench in sweat and just give it their all? And that means more to me than a report card full of A's. My name is Carlos J. Malave. I'm a passionate young educator, speaker, and now author. The reason why I do what I do is to give the kids that I teach a voice, like a, a role model, somebody they can look at and see themselves in. And that's why I wrote this book and that's why I speak um, about the topics that I speak about around the world. That was the first time I realized that addiction was real. It was the first moment I noticed that addiction had my father. I was 12. Within my book, I give life experiences that I went through. I, I put myself all out there. I tell you exactly what happened to me and how I went through it, my, the thought process. And at the end of each chapter, I challenge the reader with questions about their own situations. So they look at mine, the, my experiences, what I've been through, and then I make you think about your own stuff. So I talk about my experiences, then I ask you directly, who do you need to talk to? What do you need to do? What, how do you feel about that person? So it challenges you right away for you to answer your questions. It could be like within the first 10 pages you read and then all of a sudden you're working on yourself and then you're journaling. And that's why I think my book can be something very useful. There are people that give in, give up and quit. Don't be those people. And remember that you have the control. Free yourself from fear and see yourself grow. Aside from everything in this video, what I spoke about, my book, my work, I just want you to understand that you are the only one that's in front of you. There's no one else that can stop you but you. You are your biggest competition. You are your worst enemy. And once you're able to face yourself, accept yourself, who you are, what you're about, you will truly be unstoppable. Anyway, today um, I have with me Carlos, like I said earlier, and Carlos is uh, the author of Translating Your Success, and I'm going to let Carlos take it away. Go for it, Carlos. Thank you. I appreciate everybody watching and having me on the show. My name is Carlos Malave, and I am the Conscious Jovio Motivator. Um, I'm a motivator, educator, coach, speaker and author now. I wrote the book last year and the book is just for kids for, I say this all the time, I hated reading growing up. I absolutely hated it. My mom was an educator and she forced us to read on a constant basis to the point where I developed the skill of having the book in front of me and just flipping through the pages and learning how to think about something else while she was walking by. And I just, I, it, it wasn't something that I was into. I was an athlete and I had a lot of different interests. Reading wasn't one of them. So 
I wrote the book. It's ironic that I wrote a book, first of all. Um, but I wrote the book for kids that have um, issues reading or don't have an interest in it right now. The first thing that I remember with reading was reading my first book to completion, which was The Alchemist. And I read this in college, and it was the most interesting book that I've ever read. Um, I've read it from front cover to back cover, and it just made, it gave me a sense of accomplishment. And that's what I wanted to create with this book, Translating Your Success, it's for students and for kids or for anybody um, walk of life that they could, they, they could just start a book and read it immediately, get the point, and reread it to get um, some points out of it, some some things that they want to use and tools that they they can use in their life. So that's why I wrote the book, and that's uh, and I wrote it while I was teaching. So I wrote it. I'm a teacher, and in between classes on lunch periods at the beginning of the morning, you know, as I'm walking the hallway, I'm writing and I'm having kids like sixth grade all the way to twelfth grade read bits and parts, snippets, and tell me, oh, is that cool? Is that um, is that something that people would like to read? Does it make you want to read? And like, oh, that's whack. That's good. Keep that. So I did it with kids and it's it was built like that so i'm very um i'm very happy that my work is being out there and uh being appreciated it's on amazon right now that's so awesome um Thanks. it's funny though how you're you went from like your mother was a teacher and then you're like i don't like to read that and exactly. you turn around and now you're a teacher <laughs> exactly exactly the world works in funny ways yeah it does right yeah and um with your book i you know from what i've heard of it there's a bigger message behind it can yeah. you share that with us yeah well translating your success all came from me growing up in a bilingual household where spanish and english was constantly spoken in my household my mom she spoke to us mostly in english and my dad he didn't know English that well, so he spoke to us mostly in Spanish. And his English got really well over the years with having us around and my mom practicing at home, but um, it was, we, me and my siblings developed the language of Spanglish, where <laughs> a little bit, a little dash here, a little dash there, and we would mix it up into our own thing. And I remember very young uh, the power of uh, language and words. Um, one thing that I noticed growing up that I wasn't that successful um, in school. I was an athlete. I was good with, I had good people skills. I was very interactive. I knew how to talk to people and be around people. And I just wasn't getting it in classes and in certain in, in certain subjects, it just wasn't my thing in school. I was a C minus, C, uh, B minus student. And my brother and sister were 4.0 and 4.3 students. And they were like phenomenal students and they just had it. Um, and I remember that uh, growing up somewhere it hit me. It was like, um, my success doesn't have to be like their success. And I remember it like the words, the two um, words that came to mind was um, goodbye and adios. Two words that look totally different, look like they don't even go together, but they mean the same thing. Right. And once I was able to get that concept and transfer that into my life and all walks of uh, careers or schooling or whatever I was doing, I just remembered the whole thing about translating. Two words that mean the same thing look totally different. My success doesn't have to look like your success to be successful. Right. And that's what the book is about. And I go through each chapter of different chapters in my life and different experiences in my life, like whether it was alcoholism, uh, family, being a father, being a husband, being a, um, a student, being an athlete, being a son. Um, I just go into all different walks of life for them to get the same point and see that it all connects. So that's the whole point of the book. And that's what I get to. And that's interesting because it's a hard pill to swallow yeah, to, exactly. to understand that my success doesn't have to be like his success you know exactly. and especially as a business owner i struggle with that now yeah. <laughs> yeah. i see you know I, and i'm a marketer on top of that i you know i go on here on facebook all day and then like oh he's had reigning success and he sold x amount of this and they got this and yeah. that coming in and i'm like what am i doing wrong that they're getting all these you know fantastic systems and I got I know I got the same exact systems exactly but, but his success is not my success right exactly. and 
you know, it's a, probably a motive of God, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of how it's supposed to work. It's just not and, my time. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's crazy because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking like, you're this person that's doing her thing all over and it's big. And I'm sitting there like, I need to step my game up. And I think <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, it, it happens naturally with social, social media and all that. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing and be in the moment. That's something that I've been working on constantly uh, with my wife. She's always on top of me, like just be present, be there right. or it's gonna pass you by. Um, right. If you keep on focusing on everybody else and worrying about what you're not doing, this and that, you're gonna miss out what's in front of you right now. And uh, we just seen this movie, uh, A Wrinkle in Time with my daughter, which is a phenomenal movie. And I'm sitting there and one thing that the father goes through and he says is like he was trying to shake the universe's hand Right. Meanwhile, he missed out in shaking his daughter's hand and he missed years of spending that that crucial time with his daughter. And he, he was focused on trying to get his stuff done. And he was this scientist and trying to come up with this thing. And he was so focused on shaking the universe's hand. And it just hit me watching the movie. And I was like, oh, that's me. I don't want years to go by and miss time with my wife, miss time with my daughter and the, the most important things in life. Um, I think we all get caught up in that and it, it, it's natural because I'm just looking at me and seeing that I'm doing all these great things, but I, 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 get, I get hit up by you on, oh, you want to interview me? I'm like, oh, this person looks big. I do my research. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're doing a thing. Like I need to set my game up, this and that. It's just natural. It's okay to feel that way, but just always remember to tell yourself, all right, like I need to check in and this is me right now. I'll get there if I just focus and be present, but I won't get there if I'm not present now. And you know what's funny, Carlos, is yeah. that when I went back, like I was telling you before, like I'm not worried about you. I, I you look like you have your fish together better than I do, <laughs> but I was jealous uh -huh. of you. <laughs> <laughs> it look, it all, it all looks, it all looks good on the outside, but it's a lot of work. Like that right there. And that's why I want to do the interview with the, the picture behind me. That that means the world to me right there. That oh, My wife is a big part of what I do, and she keeps me centered. And that's what I, I speak about, too. Surround yourself around people that just right. make you want to be better and just keep you in line. Like, they don't have to say nothing. My wife's presence right. makes me want to straighten my back and wants me to do better. And sometimes I see her, she's a phenomenal mother, and I just I always feel like I need to step my game up, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it, it just is a constant struggle so don't feel I may look like everybody sees my social media and everybody sees what I'm doing and like oh my god he's doing great this and that but that's one thing I, I've been working on over the last couple of years with my work is just being as transparent as possible telling stories and being vulnerable and showing you that yes I may look like this but it comes from going through things that you're going through right now like feeling those feelings that you had a couple years ago or yesterday. And I feel that and I talk to my students and that's a good thing with my, with what I'm doing now, I'm teaching in school. So I'm working on my craft constantly. My, my main goal is trying to be the biggest motivational speaker um, and author on this planet. And I get to work on it daily. Like kids ask me questions, I get to work on, okay, how can I answer this to give him the best information that he can use right now? So it's just, uh, you just got to use what use what you have in front of you and just be present, surround yourself around people that make you want to do better and keep going. Don't stop. That's excellent advice. <laughs> just say, at the end of the day, stay your lane, stay your course, because everybody's journey is going to be different. Exactly. And you can't walk and then, you know, there's going to be people, you can't walk the same journey as them because it's not meant to be that way. Exactly. So if exactly. you're not seeing success immediate, but success is around the corner. Don't give up on success. Just find exactly. it. <laughs> and another thing that I, I did a little research uh, yesterday and somebody said this phenomenal thing. And it was like, when he's trying to figure out, when he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with his life, he mm -hmm. looked at people doing what he wanted to do and saw himself five years from now like do i want that and you need to you need to want the process not the results if you don't want that process then that's not your lane you need to get about that lane and go in the lane that you see the process being worth 
while and worth your time. And when I say worth your time and worth your while, it means that you, you absolutely love it enough where you get up on those days you don't want to get up. You do it those days you don't want to do it. And that's why that's a, that, that, that just hit me because I'm doing that with working out. Like I want to live long. I want to live right. And like I force myself to work out daily. I wake up at 3.30 every morning. I know it sounds crazy. I wake up at 3. I started it um, January. I started it this year, the school year. Um, and I wake up at 3.30 every morning. I work out for an hour. I do. I listen to uh, audio books or motivational talks. While I work out, I do my social media posts, and then I drive to work. I'm at work at 7.15. You do it better than me. I was <laughs> saying it in January. I'm going to get up at 5.30, and I'm going to get to the gym. And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's 6.30. Let me get myself to the office now. But you know <laughs> what? I feel that every morning. Every morning I feel like, oh, my God, I don't want to do it, this and that. This, is, this sucks. But... Um, one thing that I want to live by is what I talk. I want to walk the walk. That's one thing. And I, I do that. Like I got into Snapchat recently only because I, I wanted to push. I, I, I was like holding back. I was like, I don't want to get into the guy that just talks into the camera and be corny, this and that. But I looked at it a different way from a different lens. And I was like, you know what? If I, cause I talk a good game, right? I need to walk a good game. If I wake up at 3.30 every morning and I make a Snapchat post and kids are watching, they are gonna look at me like, oh no, he, he the real deal. So it's, it's not a, it's not about me. It's, it's, it's about these kids that are watching. They hit me up. They're like, yo, like they only, they look at me differently. I'm walking through school and they're like, oh, like he, he, he's for real. Like he's serious. I seen his post at 3.30 in the morning. And then I seen his second post at 3.40. Like he, he not playing. He's on the treadmill. He's running outside. He's lifting weights and he's talking like this big thing. But, and I, I say it all the time, like, um, you have to, and this is something that came up recently. Um, you have to, I, I work out, um, I, I, I try to ready my mind before other people get on my nerves. And I work my nerves, right? You got to right. ready your mind for the day. So some, and I said, there was this kid that came up to me the other day and was like, yo, like I'm having trouble at school and I don't, I, I just can't listen to teachers. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off. I'm tired and this and that. And I'm like, you're not, you're not setting daily goals. You're not ready in your mind, whether it's working out or work, waking up at three or four o'clock or five o'clock to read something. So just take that deep breath and Woosa, for me, is working out. It could be you just meditating or you can read or you could just sit in silence and just think about your day. Um, you're not doing that, so you're not readying your mind in order to go through your day. And then when somebody hits you with something you don't like, you're like thrown off. Whereas if you prepare your mind, you're ready to deal with that easier because you let out some energy you you had it in thought already you thought about what was most important what i uh, what i tell kids all the time um you write or think about three specific goals you want to do for the day daily and it could be like take out the trash do your homework speak to that person you need to speak to just write down three or think about three in the morning every time i wake up in the morning i work out and i think about the most three most important things and if you do that in the morning, that's going to stick through your whole day. So whatever happens, you're going to focus on getting that somehow done. Right. And I think if you do that, that'll help you along the way. So it's just about picking out your importance and ready in your mind for it. Right. And you're just like, just fire, but <laughs> trying to give that fire, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying I'm to, ready for this. trying to so kill we... it. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of people here watching. Hey, everybody, thanks for coming. I have John Dill, and he's saying there should be enough success to go around, but it's still something that is lost and found. And yep. then he said success is measured in different ways at different periods of our lives. And then Jim Peters, hey, Jim, he is a random advice guy. I mean, random writer advice guy. He does, um, his book is based on people who drive, who get into a taxi cab. Very interesting. Gotcha. Um, okay. I'm going to check that out, Jim. Yeah, uh, John Dill. Hey, he's once again, teaching is a gift unto itself, and helping others to learn is often the best motivation you can provide. Exactly. <laughs> then Jim Peters is saying, um, waking up at 3.30, that's li literally, oh, dark 30. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it Thank is. Thank you guys for participating and, and you know tuning in. Hey, Lorraine. 
And uh, I know Travionce was here. Hey, Travionce, thank you. Um, so yeah, we're gonna continue on. And like I said, Carlos Malau, he's, he's got a great message. If you guys have missed this, make sure you replay because he has dropped a lot of knowledge and a lot of great information and inspiration. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Um, does a big ego help or hurt writers in your opinion? I hear this all the time about ego and I think ego is very important because if you look at the dictionary definition of ego, it's self-importance. And if you don't see importance in yourself and your work, then why are you writing or why are you putting yourself out there? If you're still not at that point where you have that confidence and that ego within you, it's all about taming the ego and being in control and balancing it out. But I think ego is, uh, a big thing to do with a lot of people's success. One thing, one, I follow people from all different types of careers and I try to aim it because I grew up, I seen a bunch of different uh, people growing up and I just took pieces of everybody and I added to my, my thing and I seen people that were doing the wrong things or in the street and all that, but I would pick up things like, you know, loyalty or, you know, look somebody in the eye when you're speaking to them. And it's all about, I remember, um, I, I, I still follow him to this day, Jay-Z. I think he's an amazing, brilliant mind. And they say, you know, sometimes the, the negative situations or the ghettos or whatever don't help people, but also sometimes they, they the pressure creates diamonds and uh, Jay-Z is one of them. And I, I really thought, I really listened to his music and try to, you know, take pieces of what he was, um, what he was about and what he was trying to message out to the world. And I think it's, it's very important for you to, uh, to do that. Yes, it is. Um, you know, a lot of rappers who are coming out and they have these great messages behind them. Well, they have great messages behind them, but they still are being portrayed in, a, I would say, a negative way. What is your yeah. feeling on that? Because like you could have like Nicki Minaj or, or yeah. some type of other rapper come along and still talk like they're in the hood and really dirty and like, but then come around and turn around and send out a, a positive message. And it's kind of, to me, it's kind of like two-faced. They're like, you want my children, my children to listen to you say this in this song, but then now you're over here trying to be inspirational. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand how that works. <laughs> well, um, it's a lot like, like teaching. When you're in front of a lot of people, um, people can smell or see fake. They can, they can see the realness in you. They can see if you're genuine, if you're really about that life. Um, you know, and I, I think um, there's a lot of people that I, I, I don't agree with. And I don't, I see what they don't, but sometimes it's good to see that. So I can learn from it and people can learn from it. And that that's a lot of, and you can see in my book, um, I've learned a lot from watching other people's mistakes. Uh, like my family members, like dealing with women and dealing with uh, communication with people, dealing with conflict. I come from a situation where people didn't deal with conflict well. And I had to learn that on my own, surrounding myself and watching other people do it properly and correct or in ways that in which I thought were better fit for me to do right. and practice. And I think um, it's, 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 you got to see it for what it is and take it for yourself and take that piece of that so you can use or learn from. But like that, that you can smell it, you can see it. Like that's why I think for exactly for Jay-Z, Jay-Z has always been him. And, and you see, and the crazy thing with him, you see his growth through periods of his career. He used to rap one way when he started, and as he got older, he continuously grew and evolved into something different. And he talks about that. He said that in one of his albums, um, one of his more recent albums, where he was like, if you want to listen to my old stuff, buy my old albums. I'm not there anymore. I'm not on the street anymore. I'm at a different... Uh, plateau in my life. I'm communicating with different people. You can't hate on me for that because I've worked to, I've worked hard to separate myself, but also be able to connect, you know, right. and that, that's, that's the key. So it's all about who, like viewing who's genuine, who do you connect with most, who do you relate with the most? And then, you know, learning from those that you don't connect with or see the mistakes they do. 
So, you know, I don't really look into like, oh, this rapper, this and that. Everybody has a growing curve and they might years from now be able to talk better and, and be vulnerable and say, hey, I sucked at that. I was living this way, but saying this and what didn't make sense. But they got to figure it out for themselves. Right. I, I, that's really true. I'm glad you put it in that perspective. I just wanted to see what your point was on that argument because I always like in my mind, I battle with that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a difficult one. And I, I think you explained it really well because, like you said, at, over time, you know, um, rappers or whoever, they're going from their 20s and they're aging just like everybody exactly. else. Exactly. So you can't exactly. hold, can't hold somebody, somebody to something that they did when they were, like, in their 20s versus when they're in their 40s, you know? It's completely exactly. two different worlds at that time. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people don't have that guidance or have that example in their life yet. And maybe where they're going, they're going to get to somebody to actually tell them something or learn from it. And they'll, they'll get it eventually, but it's all about exposure. If you're not exposed to it, you really can't blame the, the individual because a lot of these entertainers and athletes are kids. They don't really know. And you got to put yourself in the mind of a teenager. Nobody should say, I was a gene. I was perfect when I was 18 or 16. I, I knew this and that. No, you did not. <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't make that growing curve myself. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, since we have writers out in the room and I have you... I want to throw a question out. I want, I want you to answer, but I also want everybody in the chat to answer. Yeah. Um, does writing energize or exhaust you? Let's do it. Do you want me to answer or you want anybody yeah. else? To? I want you All to right. So I think it, that's why when you start to write, you have to, when someone starts to write, they're really ready to do it. And it should energize you. Like for me, my book, took me three months to write. I'm already starting my second book and I plan on getting that out by the summer. By June, July, I should be finished with my second book. It just energizes me. Like I, I get stories in my head. I'm thinking about, I'm around it all the time. It depends on what you're doing too, like what, why you're writing it. And I'm writing it for the, 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 the students that I'm around daily, for the kids. I'm, well, I see my daughter, I dedicated my, my book to my wife and my daughter, my first one, and I'm around them constantly. And I say it all the time, if I was able to, if I was to leave this earth today, they have something, my daughter has something to have and read about her father and say, oh, that's what he was about. You know, I know I, I, I'm proud of that. And right. it's about surrounding yourself around that. I'm, I'm around students all the time and I just get motivated constantly. It energizes me. I'm like teaching and I get an idea and I'm like, oh, I got to write it. And I'm in between classes like, da -da -da, da -da -da. okay, I got it. I'm going I'm to put, put this down. And it should excite, excite you. I have um, friends that are authors and they told me when I was starting out, I didn't know. And it's all about networking. I asked the right questions to the right people and they gave me the right answers. And they, they told me that they were walking around with their computer constantly, like in the middle of the street, and they get an idea, boom, da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> and that's how they roll. But I have the fortunate situation of being around kids constantly. The people that are reading my stuff are right in front of my face, you know, looking to see if I'm genuine or if I'm fake or if I'm today or if I'm going to slip to tomorrow, you know, if, he, if he's really about that, you know, um, this week and I'm constantly around it. So I'm energized about it. I, I, I look at it as a challenge, like, yo, what's up? I'm here, you know, I, I'm ready for it. So it excites me. It energizes me. Like I'd be talking to, I'd be with my wife and I'd be getting ideas. So she's a brilliant mind too. My wife be spitting bars. Like she says some stuff and I'm like, Ooh, you know, so it makes me think and um i just want to write it down i jot it down in notes on my phone or i put it on paper or i just keep it in my mind when i get home i jot it down on my computer and every time you know whether it's a bathroom break or um <laughs> i'm going anywhere i just I, I write down it just it just excites you and you have if you're going to write a book you need to have that you need right. to have that excitement and it energizing you if it exhausts you you should stop and put it down and then wait for it to excite you again you know, right. and it's not ready to be made because you, if you do it exhausted, you are going to not make your best work. 
And that's right. what you don't want. You're going to regret that. I would say just write when you're energized and write when you're excited. When an idea comes or you're motivated, inspired by something that happened in your life, you know, my daughter be doing some crazy things sometimes. The other day, Saturday morning, um, we went outside because she has gymnastics and then swimming on Saturdays, right? We hooked her up with my wife, put her in um, these things. We said, we got to get it started. She's only three. So, and we like, we, she, she go into gymnastics, right? And um, she she's always like off the walls and she's, you know, she's trying to work on, she's with a bunch of older kids, but she's trying to work on a discipline and she's always distracted. So we like, we need to get her some energy out in the morning. So when you wake up at three every day, because I wake up at three o'clock every day in the morning and on the weekends as well. She's like, you should work out and then take her with you and go for a run. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and then I went and I thought it was gonna be difficult. I worked out 3 a.m. and then I came back, got her ready. We was out the door by eight o'clock. And I thought it was gonna be more of a struggle. And she was just into it. She was like, we're gonna run today. And then she takes off, she's running the whole thing. Like she ran a whole mile nonstop. She doing like back pedals and gallops and all that. And I'm just like, I need to get this on Snapchat. This is crazy, right? And she, she just motivated me. It's just at three, you know, she just has that don't care. Just give me your all, like I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. You know, and it, it motivated me. The first book, one of my chapters, I, I clearly wrote about scaring my daughter and um, how she never got scared. I used to like pop up at her and try to scare her every which way. And she, I used to think my baby was a thug. Like she, she wouldn't get scared for nothing. And I, I realized that um, we are all born like that. We're not born with fear. Fear is developed, you know? And that's something that came out of the blue. Like I was jumping at her in the house. I used to come home from work and she, I'll, she'll chase me around. I hide and then I jump at her in the dark and try to scare her. She, she always laughing. She's like, ah, cause she just thought dark meant daddy fun playtime. You know, it was never like Freddy Cougar or Michael Myers or something's gonna happen. That develops over time, but we are all born that way. And it's how we perceive things and what we're exposed to and how we explain things after we're exposed to it. So that's another thing. I don't try to keep things away from my daughter and my wife does a good thing of this. We try to explain to her, okay, what does this mean? How can you take it? You know what I mean? If she says, if she hears a bad word, no, that's a bad word. You shouldn't use it. It's not like, don't say that word. It's like, you know, it's just a bad word. You don't need to use that. Yeah. So, and <laughs> so, that, that, that's how I start writing. Like stuff like that happens and I'm like, boom. So, yeah. So with, um, I keep hearing you say Snapchat. Yeah. And I feel old because I've tried Snapchat and I've tried Snapchat and I tried Snapchat and I tried <laughs> Get Snapchat, but yeah. and it's awesome that you went and took the initiative to go and learn Snapchat because exactly. uh, that's where your audience is, especially your young, the younger audience. Mm -hmm. And when you were in the process of that, um, learning how to do this, well, ultimately my question is, do you have any tips for us old folks out here <laughs> who are <laughs> trying to engage young adult and, um, you know, uh, you know, children readers, oh, it's not really children. They're a little bit older than, but you know, but that, that's where they're at. They're on yeah, yeah. And YouTube. <laughs> yes, I'm on YouTube as well. I'm, I'm trying to get better with YouTube. I'm getting the hang of Snapchat, but um, yeah, I was never this person that was into all these social media sites. I just had Facebook and, you know, I'll write when I felt something. I was never seeing content as a big thing to do constantly. Um, what I would say and what I do all the time, my mentor, Ariel Moutier, former uh, top 30 under 30 entrepreneurs and author as well, he's the one that took me under his wing and showed me the ropes and I joined, joined this program, phenomenal dude and speaker and author. Um, he just told me like, you just have to constantly ask. Don't be afraid to ask. And I was like that naturally, but at this level, at this profession, like still having to, just knowing that you still have to, do, it's all the same thing, you know, what we're told. And it's just the people that are willing to do it are the ones that end up seeing success from it. But people get frightened and thinking it's all in their mind and thinking that they don't need to have to do that and this and that, and they stop themselves. 
And right. it just, it's, a, it's, it's simple, you know, just go up and shake that person's hand, start that conversation, build that relationship, you know? And, and, and for me, just asking like, and following, seeing the trends, just going, like I told you before, look at somebody, look at the profession you want to go into, see five, 10 years from now, do you like that process? And uh, if you do like that process, you start following the trends of people that are doing great things. One and another person that I follow is Gary V. And that dude, that's all he talk about. Content, 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 content. And the crazy, and the, the most important thing that hit me that, that Gary V said that changed my whole career with this speaking thing and the style that I do it in which was just put it out there. It doesn't matter if it sucks. Just keep putting it out there and then you'll get better with time. The more material you have, the more you're practicing naturally is like, and I'm an athlete. I play college basketball and everything. The more shots you get up, the more go in eventually. Yeah. So you got to get your shots up. For me, Snapchat, I, 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 did, I didn't like the idea. I like doing like the whole, you see my YouTube channel doing, I have, um, professionals do it and all that. I like doing the whole professional scene, but I didn't like holding the, the phone and, you know, videotaping me talking. I thought that was kind of corny, to be honest. And um, I was like, you know what? If I'm going to be about it, I need to be about it. Kids are on Snapchat. They're not on Instagram that much because their parents are on Instagram and Facebook. If you want to know why, that's why they're not on these sites because their parents have these accounts and they can see what they're doing. So I've learned this from teaching these students and they get Snapchat because it, it, the feeling that you have is why they stay on Snapchat because they know um, parents are like more bound to say, ah, I'm too old or ah, I don't want to learn this or whatever. But and they be trying this. Some people be doing some wild things on them site, on, on Snapchat. And that, that that's that's why. But I had to learn, <laughs> I had to learn. <laughs> I know it is it is crazy but um I have to see I have to have my own purpose and you need to have your own purpose you need to know your audience whenever you're writing a book or speaking you need to know your audience and no matter what content is out there everybody can need what you offer if you offer it constantly and in a way that's efficient or you know it seems like it has a purpose and for me my content is Probably nothing like on Snapchat, nothing like what everybody else has um, on their feeds. And when they see me, mine sticks out, you know? Right. So, and I'm getting a lot of views on the posts. I, I wake up, I try to speak into the camera or take a picture every day. And then I, I post other things like about my book and things that I felt and my daughter. I mix it up. And it's all about being that person. Like, I, I, I'm showing them. I'm not just... Person talking to talk exactly exactly like yeah. the struggles that i go through and all that so it's all about you know your purpose and just you got to put yourself out there even if and i say it all the time and i tell my kids all the time the the wisest person on this earth is the oldest person that keeps asking questions to the <laughs> youngest people you know it doesn't matter how old you are um if you keep on asking and learning you will be the wisest person, you know? So I I, I, turn, I plan on this turning all gray and me still learning from these youngins. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go out here and um, Jim Peters answered our question, um, if writing exhausts or energize. And he says both. It energizes, it energizes when I'm in the mode, but when I write a scene that is really tough, like killing off a favorite character, it can be draining. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And yeah. then um, John Dill, he said, boy, you just made some students nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm watching. I'm watching. <laughs> now I got to go get Snapchat. I got to go figure it out so I can go watch what my kids do. But my, <laughs> my teen, she is an Instagram fool. <laughs> Maybe go on, maybe doing some crazy stuff on Instagram. I yeah, you have yeah. to monitor what your children do. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing with that, um, one thing too, with my material, my content, it kind of I hope and I've seen some change. It kind of inspires kids to do better, and I, I, I look at it like that. You know, what I mean, if you look at it differently, 
then it'll probably be easier because I see my my thing inspiring kids. Like there was one kid who was like, I'm gonna beat you in a 5K. And he act, he literally got on the treadmill and took a picture of him running the 5K and said, oh, I did it. I did it in under this much time. Come get me. And he's posting stuff like that now. So it could pass and it can be like a, a, a snowball effect. And that's yeah. how I look at it too. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, that, that's what kids need. They need more yeah. positive role models out there actually posting instead of them posting the craziness that they're going through with their hormones and yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> the kids are not, like my i have my kids i had two i put two i usually homeschool my kids but i put two of them in um public school this year and i already pulled them out <laughs> they were just too crazy. Like, uh, it's tough it's yeah. tough I, i'm not there yet my daughter is in uh preschool right now so I don't, I don't know. It's, it's it's scary, but you know, I'm I'm, uh, we'll see when we get there. <laughs> so, what authors did you dislike at first, but grew into? Everybody, <laughs> everybody. I dislike I dislike reading. Like I'm telling you, I did not like reading at all. Um, so I relate to these kids that look at me and like, you wrote a book, I'm not reading that. And what excites me is when they start reading it and they're like, yo, that's dope. Oh, that's hot. I didn't know a book could do that. I didn't know a book could talk like that. I, it relates to me. So it excites me. Like, I'm like, I right, bet read this first page. And if you don't like it, you can stop writing it. I'm whack. All right. And then they start reading it and they're like, and then all of a sudden they down the chapter five. And I'm like, damn, it's only been like 30 something minutes. <laughs> so um, that ha that excites me. And um, I don't know, I, I like that stuff with the, with the kids not wanting to read. So I connect to that. I didn't like anybody and I got into uh, um, Puelo, Coelho, uh, Pablo Coelho from uh, The Alchemist is one of my favorite authors. Um, John Maxwell, phenomenal. Um, author read like two or three of his books. Um, uh, also, oh, I'm reading this right now. And this is the dope, this is a dope book right here. Between the World and Me by Coates. And this book right here is phenomenal. He is the real deal. Um, and it's talking about growing up as a, a black American and the experiences he grew up and how he connected dots. A lot of what kind of like the stuff I connect with, with translating my success from different avenues and perceiving it differently. So um, he's another one that I just got into. He's phenomenal. I'm going to try to read more of his stuff, but I'm into it. And there's another thing when when I read, I don't know if you can see, but I highlight everything up in here. When I see people sp spitting bars, like I highlight everything up in here. So um yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. It excites me to, you know, just reading a book that I think can help me. Tony Robbins, uh, I'm reading a book of Tony Robbins right now. Um, Jim Rohn, uh, Les Brown. I read a lot of motivators and then people that are not even in my field, I, I just pick up and, you know, try it. If it doesn't work for me, I close it, find another book. So, um, yeah. I would definitely recommend people when, when you're ready. Um, someone told me this before. Um, nothing that you're trying to do hasn't been done or written about before. So all you have to do is pick up a book and learn, yeah. you know, and then you'll be able to go on your way to figuring out the greatness that you were meant to be. Hey, um, I believe I missed it while you're picking up books over there. Where's your book? <laughs> Can we see your book cover? <laughs> I actually don't have one on me, which is kind of upsetting because constantly when I do have books, I work in the school. I be have, I be trying to keep these books on me, but they moving like hotcakes at my school. They, they, the kids always asking for a copy, and I don't want to deny a kid. You know, it, it means more to me for a kid to have a copy of the book. And um, it's all right. It's all yeah, right. I apologize, but it. Do it does exist and it is on Amazon. I don't make people feel like, oh, then he don't have his book. It's not real. It does exist. It's on Amazon and it's 29 five-star reviews right now. It's doing pretty well. Um, yeah. 
So I would definitely recommend everybody to do it, uh, to get it and tell me what you think about it. And I'm, I'm big on constructive feedback. If it sucks or if it's not your cup of tea, then tell me and I, tell me how I could do it better. What can I add or what can I do better? And um, right. people have been able to do that for me and tell me the truth. And that's another thing. Surround yourself around truth tellers. Don't get around people that tell you what you want to hear. Rather get around people what you need to hear. Yep, exactly. Because and people tell you anything. Yeah. Um, John Dill, he says, the world is not colorblind for a reason. Another layer of challenges that makes us better people when we overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Um, if you didn't write, what would you do for work? Well, we already know what to do for work. But what yes. <laughs> I do a lot. I do a lot. Um, well, I, like I said, I want to be one of the best speakers of all time, educator, teacher, and just being around um, the youth and giving my knowledge. The reason why I am the way I am, I had numerous people uh, step into my life and influence me in so many different ways, impactful ways. Like I had coaches, Coach Powell. Um, I remember I was uh, trying to become a basketball player and I was horrible. And I remember I was always the work workaholic though. I was at the park three hours before everybody got there. I would shoot and do drills, not just shoot and just play around like, ha ha, have fun. I was doing basketball drills and then suicides and sprints in between. People get there three hours later. I play with them for three more hours. And then when everybody leaves, I'm shooting for another three hours by myself and all of a sudden he he started coming out and catching my rebounds and passing it to me and then telling me all right do this and do that and then i would watch him and the way he was a, a lot of males in my life didn't have this type of calmness and confidence in themselves and he represented what a man was supposed to be like you know and it, it just hit me and it's like oh i could be like that he gave me an example you know, and that's what, you know, I want to represent an idea for students in my school. Um, like, oh, you know, he's a teacher, but he, he he's like me. He, he came from similar situations. He talks similar. You know, he's, he, he looks like, you know, that's how I want to be. And the crazy thing, I also have my, um, my wife at work. She's a teacher there as well. So it's kind of everybody's like, oh, why are you... You know, it shouldn't it be crazy go around your wife all the time. I think I love it. I, I love it because she does a thing. She's a phenomenal teacher. She does a thing. I'm in another section of the, the uh, school. She does a thing at a different grade. But when we, we drive home like 45 minutes, I mean, we get to talking out the way. So it's not like you driving home in silence and then you get home and then you have to talk about your day. It's like once we get in the car, we talk about our issues. Then we uh, about what happened at school. When we get home, it's about being at home and being with our daughter and, you know, thinking about and enjoying ourselves in our company. So, um, but anyway, that's, that's another thing. But me and my wife, me being a husband in front of these kids, like a male representative that, you know, carries himself in a certain manner with respect. And then the way he ca he treats, you know, his wife. And it's like, he's not all over her or he doesn't have to hold a hand to know, for everybody to know that that's his wife. You know, it's a power in that way. You have kids thinking they have to be all over their partners for people to know that's theirs or their 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 partner or their what they have, and they can't mess it up. It just show, I like to I like to represent that. Yeah, hmm? knowing that they're that showing that insecurity in exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I just like um, I've had a bunch of people do that for me, and my coach Powell, my coach. Rob Garantes, he was a big influence, my um, my guidance counselor, Tim Marr, and I constantly had male figures walk into my life. And like I said, I was a sponge. I grabbed a piece of everybody, took what made sense, and then put it in here, and just went with it. Beautiful. <laughs> it's so awesome. Thank so, you. So, um, as we're coming to an end here, what is upcoming for you? Um, I know you said second book. And yeah. Um, yeah, what we got going for the rest of this year? What what do we got to watch for? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, talking about doing new things, this is crazy. So I have friends that are in all walks of life, and I have a friend that's a music producer. 
and um, he does songs and he seen some one my work and he said send him an audio so I sent him an audio of my one of my uh, new materials um, and he made a song out of it and he actually is mastering it right now so you could be on the lookout for my first single <laughs> Sounds crazy. Thought I'd never say that, but um, my first single uh, on SoundCloud, and it is uh, like two to three minute motivation on. I don't want to give it away, but it's not me rapping. It's not me singing. It's me speaking motivation, and he's mastering the beat to go with every uh, voice note that I hit. So it's like he's making it. He's patterning the. Um, the song to my voice. So it's gonna sound professional, it's gonna sound amazing. I heard the first draft is phenomenal. I'm hype off it. I'm, it inspired me to write my, my second book. So I'm like, oh, I'm listening to it constantly. And it's not even done yet. So that's coming out, my second book. Uh, I have a new YouTube video coming out when I spoke. Um, I had a speaking engagement at uh, SUNY Cortland, my alumni, a couple weeks ago, where I did my first book signing and had 100 copies, spoke, uh, signed books, and stayed like three hours after the event was done with people trying to answer people questions and, and be there and be present and make them feel like I was real. Um, so I didn't leave till everybody left. <laughs> and I made sure I was there. So I have the video for that coming out so you can see my work live and what I do and how I present it. Um, I'll be trying to speak um, all over. I'm in Houston, Texas right now. I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, New York and Bellport, New York. So I was born in Brooklyn and raised in Brooklyn, Long Island. And um, so I moved out to Houston, Texas. So I, but I travel all over the country to speak at different schools. If what I do interests anybody on here um, to bring me into your school, um, we can set up a, a call or um, an email where I'll send you my information and we can detail things out. Um, just a lot of that, me me putting myself out there, getting more content. You can follow me on Snapchat tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, so also my social media is always constant, Instagram. So um, my Instagram handle is CJ Motivation. You'll see this bald face. Um, pop up immediately. My picture is all over. If you Google me, all my content has my picture that's on my uh, cover of Translating Your Success on Amazon. Um, so Instagram is CJ Motivation. Um, on Snapchat is C uh, Carlos J Malave 24. Um, also, it's on my Instagram. If you can, if you don't remember the name, on my Instagram I have the Snapchat thing, Facebook. Well, drop the links how about that yes that'll be good that'll be good so i'm going off <laughs> so yeah but i'll get them all the links yeah yeah sorry sorry so but i just have uh a lot of things new material always coming out i'm excited i'm energized about writing my second book i'm energized about the next speaking engagement that i have in a couple weeks at kip houston high school uh, where i'm going in i'm speaking to the ninth and tenth graders finishing off their year um, you know, I'm excited about what comes next. I'm just always ready for the next thing. That's awesome. And yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what, how you grow in the next yes. year, because you're somebody that needs to be in the schools and getting yeah. the message out there and motivating children to be more than what they can be, what they think they can be, you know? Exactly. And yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. So this has been an awesome interview. I got another one for the books, you guys. Um, we'll check back in with Carlos a few months from now, maybe like, you know, hopefully a few months from now, see where he's at, see where I'm at, because, you know, we're upgrading. <laughs> and um, Got to see the new yeah. studio. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's been an awesome hour. Um, if you guys want to check out his stuff, we're going to drop the links in the chat after this. Um, definitely go follow all he's got because um, if we can help just a little bit lift an author up, it does miracles because you never know what live we're going to touch just by sharing some content. Yeah. So share, 
share, like, comment. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. No problem. All right, you guys, y'all have a wonderful night. One moment. Hashtag support your author by leaving reviews. You can visit this author's book at the link above. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to receive our notifications.